Welcome to Aslef from the Coverage Channel. During the previous video, I explained how the mass air flow sensor and the MAP sensor affect the way that ECM changes the fuel mixture injected by the fuel injectors. During today's video, I'm going to explain how the oxygen sensor also contributes to either lean or rich in the mixture. And this mixture is always changing, as I explained previously, depending on driving conditions, weather, when you're driving uphill, coasting, idling. All of these factors. So we're going to take a look at this vital sensor of the engine. And by knowing how the sensor works, it's going to enable you to test it in case you have a defective sensor. So let's take a closer look. This is an up close look to a four wire oxygen sensor. It's missing the plug for better illustration purposes. So to get started we'll do a super short recap. So we know that the fuel pump that is usually located inside the tank delivers the fuel to the fuel injectors and usually a multi-core fuel injector has an injector for each cylinder so this is a V8, this is a 4 cylinder we know that the pump is activated by the ECM through the fuel pump relay and we have learned that there's also a throttle body unit system usually found on the earlier fuel injected engines that have the injectors right there in the throttle body where it explains the TPS, the idler control valve. In the last video, like I said, we went over the mass airflow sensor and the MAP sensor. So today we're going to go over the oxygen sensor, which like I said earlier, is a very vital part of your engine. There's going to be different types of sensors. Um, on the outside, they're all going to look alike. They're going to have a metal casing. They have threads because they turn into the exhaust system. We're going to start with the earliest of them all. The very first oxygen sensors they used to have only one wire. That was it. Okay, so there was only one. And the way the sensors operated was before they started working, the exhaust temperature needed to reach about 600 degrees Fahrenheit. So prior to the exhaust reaching that temperature for the oxygen sensor to start working and sending the signal to the computer, the computer would keep the vehicle on what is called open loop. And once the signal was generated by the oxygen sensor, then the computer will use this information along with all the other information sent by the other sensors to either lean or reach the mixture. So that was the first one. And usually you can use a voltmeter. Any digital voltmeter will enable you to test the oxygen sensor operation. So what you would do is so you would connect your leads to your voltmeter, you would set it on a volt, you know, like 20 should be more than enough. It's a very small signal, it goes from 0 0.1 to 1 volt. So we already said that the casing is ground, so ground this lead to any metal part of your vehicle, and what you would do, uh, you can't unplug it, it has to be plugged in, so you would try to slide a paper clip in between the connection, you could always peel the insulation slightly, not much so you don't damage it and like I said with the sensor connected you would hook your positive and what's going to happen when the vehicle is running you're going to see the voltage signal change and it's going to range like I said from 0 0.1 to 0 0.9 the desired field mixture is usually 14.7 to 1 so when that desired mixture has been reached usually the voltage is going to be about 0, 0 0.47 volts to 0 0.5 a volt but it's not going to be constant if you have a constant signal uh, coming from the oxygen sensor all the time the sensor is going to be defective because regardless of how perfect the conditions are there's slightly variations that's going to cause this voltage to fluctuate up and down the lower the voltage drops from half a volt that indicates that the mixture is getting lean and when the voltage increases over half a volt you know in worst case scenario like 0 0.9 that's a very rich mixture that's how you would test it and like I said that would be for one wire oxygen sensors now as the time went by and the manufacturers got better depending how modern your car is there's a possibility that you may see a two wire oxygen sensor so a two wire oxygen sensor now has a heating element inside so now it has the signal wire and it has the heating element. 
is still going to use the casing as the ground, but the sensor is going to reach the desired temperature a lot quicker because it's not going to depend on the exhaust temperature to do it. So you have your signal wire, you have the power wire to the heating element, which is usually 12 volts, and you have the ground. You still test it the same way with your digital voltmeter, and the ranges should be similar as the one wire. Same thing, as the time went by, now so many factors decided, hey, let's not use the casing as the ground, and let's give it its own ground. So then you're going to see a three-wire sensor. So you're going to have, normally, okay, don't quote me on this, you're going to have to use your voltmeter to find out which ones they are, but normally the two white wires are going to be the heating element. So when it was a two-wire, you had the voltage coming to the oxygen sensor, and normally there is a fuse in between in case something happens it doesn't damage the computer now with the three wire you have the voltage and then you have the other one as a ground and then you still have your signal wire so that would be the three wire no different than the two wire or the single wire it can be tested the same way and the best design of oxygen sensors is going to have four wires one two three four so you still have your signal you still have your two wires for your heating element, one is the power, one is the ground and what makes this so much different than the previous ones now the computer is sending a reference signal to the sensor and it's going to measure what's coming out so this makes the sensor a lot more accurate now here's something to think about too the oxygen sensors usually are going to have the same color wires you know, this one is made by Bosch which is one of the first manufacturers of the oxygen sensors and you're going to have the two white ones, a black one, and a gray one. Now what you have to realize, even though most oxygen sensors are going to have the same colors, the colors that are coming from your vehicle are going to be different. So where they connect together, you're going to see that the colors from the wiring harness of your vehicle do not match the colors of the oxygen sensor. So you're going to have to, like I said, use your voltmeter, and if possible, use a wiring diagram. So when you have a wiring diagram, you will know which colors of your car are the ground, the signal, the power source for the heating element, and the reference signal in case it's a four wire. So that's the best way to find out. So very short recap, oxygen sensors are threaded into the exhaust system. Here's another important thing to know. Earlier vehicles usually had just one oxygen sensor, the one that was your one, the one that had only one wire, Usually you only saw one oxygen sensor in the entire car. Later on, you started seeing two oxygen sensors. Let's say if it was, if it was a V8 engine, you have one for each side. As the catalytic converts became the norm to lower the pollution, now, let's say if your vehicle is a four-cylinder, you're going to see one oxygen sensor near the exhaust manifold, and you're going to see a second oxygen sensor after the catalytic converter. If your vehicle is either a V6 or a V8, it's going to have four oxygen sensors. You're going to have one oxygen sensor for each bank, which usually they're called bank one, bank two, and the one closest to number one cylinder is going to be called bank one, sensor one. And the one closer to the other side is going to be called bank two, sensor one. So those are the ones closest to the exhaust manifold. The ones that are after the catalytic converter, same thing, if they are near the, if they are on the side of the number one cylinder, is going to be bank one, sensor two because it's the second one and the one on the other side is going to be bank 2, sensor 2. When you're reading the codes that your ECM is generating, that's how it's going to pinpoint it. It's going to say bank 1, sensor 1, bank 1, sensor 2, running lean, running rich, and so forth. So that's how you're going to know. Now, something else to consider. The oxygen sensor that is closest to the exhaust manifold, you're going to see a faster fluctuation on the voltage. Okay, it should change very rapidly from you know anywhere from 0 0.2 to 0 0.9, but 0 0.9 is too rich, so hopefully it's, it's only doing like 0 0.3 to 0 0.6.5 to 0 0.7. You know, that would be a more even mixture. Remember, it's not gonna stay the same regardless. It would only stay the same if the sensor was bad or there was another issue. So those sensors that are the closest to the manifold, they will be changing very fast. The voltage will be fluctuating really fast. Now the oxygen sensors that are after the catalytic converter, they're still going to fluctuate, but they shouldn't fluctuate as fast as the first ones. The reason why is because by then, the catalytic converter already did its job. 
so it should be a little bit more steady voltage. What I mean by steady, I don't mean that it's going to stay the same all the time. I just mean that it's not going to go up and down so fast. If the fluctuation from the number one oxygen sensor and the number two oxygen sensor are fluctuating at the same speed, at the same rate, at that point you know that your catalytic converter is defective and is no longer doing its job. So pinpointing codes when it comes to oxygen sensor can be a little bit challenging. Uh, sometimes a person may change the oxygen sensor thinking that that is the problem when in reality it was the catalytic converter. Or when you have your oxygen sensors always on the rich side or the lean side, then at that point you know that the oxygen sensors are not going to be the problem because there is no way that all four oxygen sensors are going to go bad at the same time. So even if your ECM gives you an oxygen sensor code, you need to look at your data, that way you can see what's causing it. And if they're all showing rich or lean, then you have another problem that you need to look into. If you have three oxygen sensors that are working correctly, and then one that is steady and is not fluctuating, then yes, your oxygen sensor is bad. So just because you get an oxygen sensor code, that doesn't mean that you should just go ahead and replace the sensor right away, because it may not be the problem. And granted, they're not as expensive as they were at the beginning, depending on your make. You could be looking anywhere from $50 to $200, maybe even more if you have a very expensive vehicle. So gambling with that kind of money for no reason is not going to be a good thing. And the purpose of this video is just to give you some information of how they operate, that way you can understand them. So how do the oxygen sensors affect the fuel mixture? Well, very simple. So just like I said, if all of a sudden the voltage starts going up, you know, over half a volt, that indicates a rich mixture. So what the computer is going to do is going to change the pattern of the fuel injectors. That way there's less fuel injected. Same thing. If all of a sudden the voltage drops below half a volt, the ECM will do the same thing. It's going to change the pattern of the fuel injectors and there's going to be slightly more fuel being injected. Now you got to realize that all these changes are happening in fractions of a second. And that is the reason why the fuel injected systems outperform the older carbureted engines. Because the old carbureted engines, they were not able to make those changes so rapidly. So that's why the modern electronic fuel injected vehicles enable the engines to last so long. Because there's a lot less carbon buildup, there's a, there's a lot less fouling of spark plugs due to the good mixture. And remember, the desired fuel mixture is 14.7 to 1. This is going to conclude today's video. I'll be explaining how the remaining sensors work on upcoming videos. But for now, you should be starting to get a really good understanding of how the complete electronic fuel injection system works. And now you should be understanding why it's so efficient and why it's so desirable. So thanks for watching today's video and we'll see you next time.